Good morning. And welcome to St. Christopher's on this fourth Sunday of Lent, also known as Terry Sunday, Rejoice Sunday, and a day when we will also celebrate Holy Baptism. Our service begins in the middle of page two of your leaflet. Bless the Lord who forgives us all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. As they wandered in the wilderness, the people came impatient with Moses and resentful of God. They are punished for their disobedience, but God heals them when they, are, when they repent. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on their way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out into Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we, and we detest the miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, as they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And for everyone who has been shall look at it and live. So so Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Here ends the reading. Does that help? I'm having technical difficulties. Let us join in reading portions of Psalm 107, found on page 3 of your bulletin. 
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and mercy endures forever. Let all who the Lord redeem proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. And some were fools and took rebellious ways. They afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and they drew to death still. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he received them in distress. Thanks to the Lord for his mercy and his wonders as he does for his little children. Let the offer of a sacrifice and thanksgiving tell his act and shout of joy. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. And just in case you missed some of the Old Testament that Thane read to us, it's not that bad a thing you missed it. It's a bunch of people in the wilderness complaining, complaining about food and complaining about everything. But as we know, God works in mysterious ways and God was working in mysterious ways um, then. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son 
so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And now you may be seated again. Just like the olden days in the Episcopal Church. Up, down, kneel, up, down. Lots of aerobic exercise. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I bet many of you have that memorized. Remember when we used to go to football games live and in person? And we used to see those signs with that scripture on it. And it has led me to wonder this week uh, if any of the cardboard figures that have been set up to watch football games this year carried any cardboard signs with that well-known Bible verse. Somebody who watches football all the time in the first service said no, he'd never seen it. No, never seen it? Yeah. Well, nonetheless, it will be nice to have uh, football games where we can go um, basketball games where we can go, symphony when we can go. But for now, welcome here and welcome to Le Terre Sunday. This is Rejoice Sunday. Le Terre means rejoice. And it's supposed to be a respite in the middle, middle of the penitential season of Lent. But it seems particularly appropriate this year because it feels as if Lent has been at least a year long. But we have something to put a smile on your face today. We will baptize Gabrielle Batzer's grandson, Anton. Some years ago, I preached a sermon in which I connected this verse, John 3, 16, the giving of the Son, and notice we didn't really have anything to do with it. We didn't grant our consent. We didn't get consulted by God. God gave the Son, and I connected it to infant baptism. So I'm going to take the liberty of using some of those words from long, long ago and weaving them into the message today. We regularly bring young children to the baptismal font before they can offer their consent. And then we immerse them in God's love. And that really is the heart of baptism when you think about it. God just plain adopts us. He makes us his own, and he pledges to be both with us and for us forever. All of this 
if you are baptized as an infant, whether you're ready, whether you're interested, whether you cry or sleep, whether you're even aware of what's going on. This is God's act of prevenient grace. I'm not sure if I can point to anybody in this service, but I know there were several at the first service. Uh, Tom and Lynn Simpson uh, went, Tom and I have gone, to a three-day weekend called Curcio, Little Course in Christianity, also called Walk to Emmaus, three-day weekend. And one of the talks that the priests give at the weekends is about prevenient grace, the idea of God loving us before we're even aware of it. And that is the heart of baptism. I heard this story years ago before I had a family, and it rings true to me. A young daughter was protesting her bedtime, and when her father was heading out of the room, he said to her, I love you. And she said, I hate you. Well, I love you, he repeated. Don't say that, she said back. And he repeated, I love you. And she said again, don't say that. And so then a war of words ensued, and finally, he just said, well, I love you, like it or not, and quickly closed the door. God loves us, like it or not. And you know, if God ever made his love for us conditional, then we would all of a sudden have tremendous, tremendous power. We could negotiate with God, which probably some of us try to do anyway, threaten God, tell God to go take a hike if we don't like what's going on in our lives, and sometimes if we blame God for what is going on. But when God just loves us completely and unconditionally, and then, when God takes on flesh and he dies for us, well, pretty much then the jig is up for us. There is not anything we can do to influence God. And that's just what happens in this famous verse within this passage. Listen once more. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. And I think that that is an important verse for today also as we baptize Gabrielle's grandson. But there it is in a nutshell. You can run, but you can't change the fact that God loves you. You can't really do a lot about that one way or the other. God's unconditional, rational, radical love is yours, whether you seek it or not. There is another kind of love where you reach out your hand and accept God's love, and we talk about that at Walk to Emmaus as well. But for a baby, God's love is there as prevenient grace, prevenient love, there before that baby is even really fully aware of it. Does that mean that we all have nothing to do, uh, nothing to contribute to this most important relationship, but just sit back and enjoy the jacuzzi of God's love? No. Once we've been loved this fully, this completely, we can respond in love, honoring God and sharing the news of God's love for the world with all we meet. As St. John writes, and as Jesus' cross and resurrection guarantees, I'll say it again, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him 
may not perish, but have everlasting life. Like it or not. Amen. And so at this point, I will make my way to the back of the church. We have the baptismal font in the back today. Normally that is its place, symbolic of that being baptism, the way you enter into the church. And we decided to keep it in the back. Uh, if the kids arrive from Godly Play, they'll be able to see it also. Um, and so we will head back to uh, celebrate holy baptism.
Deliver him, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Open him heart to your grace and truth. Fill him with your holy and life-giving spirit. Keep him in the faith and communion of your holy church. Teach him to love others in the power of the Spirit. Send him into the world in witness to your love. Bring him to the fullness of your peace and glory. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
please be seated. All right. This uh, does not work. is hard then it's the first time I've ever worked with the bat baptismal family where we said okay let's make sure we scrunch up together so that we all get into the live streamed picture so and this is going on out online we ordered months ago some new sound equipment and it just arrived so yay um, for birthdays, I, I have myself have Desiree Takahama Gold uh, for this day. I did her wedding. Gail Wendell Maranha and Hollis Maxson. And it's in the early 90s for him, I think. So make sure, um, pick up the phone and call him and wish him a happy birthday. And then another one also on the 18th, do you have that one? Hank, Hank Hankins' birthday is on the 18th. So maybe pick up the phone and call him as well. Our daughter Caroline Lau's birthday is Tuesday the 16th. We should write that in our directory. And Larry Stamey was yesterday Yes? All right. Well, they don't count unless you write it into our directory, so let's make sure you do that. Um, uh, Evie Shoemaker, uh, we've asked parents, and I ask again, um, and we'll do, we will do the community prayer. Uh, I, we've asked if you parents will fill out forms or, or grandparents or those who bring children to church will fill out the forms that are in the back that give the contact information, really important, birthdays, age, uh, allergies, if any. And so Evie Shoemaker, who's seven, uh, filled out hers for her and her sister on one page. And for age, she put seven, and zero. <laughs> Her sister was born just a few months ago. So please join with me in the community prayer. Watch over your children, O oh Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's wish people happy birthday and congratulations in Hawaiian. Haole la hanau, aho mai kai. And I think you most of you, just about everybody, I don't see anyone here who wouldn't know this, that our offering plates are stationary these days, one up here, here, and one at the very back. So um, that's where you find them. These are easy as you come up for communion. Um, and congratulations again to Anton Luce on his baptism. We have more coming up, by the way, so stay tuned. Um, Easter flowers, I believe you have a little envelope in your bulletin for Easter flowers. Preston and I just filled ours out and put them in the offering basket. Um, if you'd like to uh, donate flowers for, in memory of somebody, in honor of someone, to the glory of Easter. Um, and you can do that online as well. We have uh, a few names for uh, getting some more shirts. Is anybody wearing their shirt? Somebody is wearing a shirt. Two people, at least two people are wearing their 
75th anniversary shirt. They're really great. And so if we get 25 more names, we will, uh, we will be purchasing them. So please do think about that. Oh, and Tom wanted me to say also, he's got plenty of caps. So $15. On Saturday, March 27th, the day before Palm Sunday, the youth and the altar guild, I believe, and any interested adults will gather in the library to make palm crosses, fill plastic eggs with candy, and hear about red Easter eggs. The kids will also hear about confirmation and talk about what they would like to do this coming spring and summer. Uh, the camp weekend remains Friday, April 30th to Sunday, May 2nd. Look online this week, there will be a registration form. And um, for more information, also look online. I've talked about Family Promise and the new uh, system for how to do that. If you would like to be involved, uh, it, I think it works best for four people to be involved in making Meals for 20 and delivering to the emergency shelter in Honolulu. Please let us know if you're interested and, uh, and also what dates you can do that so that four we can gather four people and make plans. Then there's a Holy Week calendar and Lenten discipline possibilities. It seems as if the daily office sort of fell off that for families and for individuals. But you guys know how to do that, right? So, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Oops, wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my fault, my fault. Yes, indeed, it's your turn. Thane, we missed you two weeks ago. This is your study Bible. Um, I particularly picked it out because it's got pictures in it and not a whole lot of long words. So I hope you enjoy it and use it as you want to as you get older. And thank you so much for everything that you and all our junior lay readers are doing. Yeah. Thank you. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live and no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with King Kamehameha IV, Queen Emma, St. Christopher, and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us take them in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in our heart by faith and with thanksgiving.
communion, O oh Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now celebrated, I offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish I that I may always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all the love of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live in you and may you live in me, both in this life and the life to come. Amen. A fully hope. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And as Anton entered new life today, and as all of us did as we repeated and renewed our baptismal vows, may we truly see God in all creation today. May we truly feel the Holy Spirit in our hearts. And may we truly trust that through Jesus we will have life eternal with God. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon and within you now and forever. Amen. Amen.